Hey folks, welcome back to the homestead. So today I want to talk to you about something pretty important and that is uh, the use of plastics in the pool and uh, is there any kind of um, chemicals or microplastics, anything like that that we have to worry about getting into the fish which will ultimately get into us. Seems kind of important. Um, more than once that's come up in the comments down below. Uh, people challenging uh, about whether it's healthy and safe to use those. I have my own concerns about it too. Uh, so before I ever got started with it, I did my own research and I mean if you look around me There's lots of plastic you see plastic over there in the bins and the buckets you see plastic here the um, The pool filters for the pool noodles the pool itself uh, the, the pumps the, the filters all this stuff uses plastics lots of them <laughs> and, and we got plumbing um, so It's important that we make sure we're getting this right and uh, we, don't, we don't want to be causing any problems for ourselves, our loved ones, our, our friends, anybody who might be eating our fish. And if you're doing this commercially, of course, you have to make sure everything is safe. Uh, so let's talk about it. And let's start by talking about PVC and the, mainly the plumbing that is used. I have a piece of the plumbing right here I want to show you. All right, so this here is the type of pipe that I've used in my plumbing. This is uh, well casing. And you can see right there it says well casing. Uh, this is a two-inch PVC. You see all these numbers and letters and everything that are stamped on here these look like codes well they are codes and they actually have some meaning meaning that can tell us whether or not we should be using this stuff uh, for our fish pond all right so let's take a look at some of these so right here you're going to see that this says astm d1785 over here we have astm f40 here we have astm d2665 What's this ASTM? Well, ASTM stands for American Society for Testing and Materials. And they are an organization that creates standards uh, that manufacturers and installers of this kind of equipment, of pipes and plumbing materials and all kinds of stuff, um, they set standards, quality standards and safety standards that then the manufacturers can stamp on there and say, hey, we have met these, this criteria over here. And it tells us what this can be used for. And so when you look at the codes, you're gonna see those codes in there, uh, in the plumbing codes that say, hey, you have to use something that has met this criteria here. So ASTM is one of those. All right, now the 1785, so back and look at it. The ASTM D1785, that tells us that this pipe is meets the standards for irrigation and um, water distribution piping. The ASTM F480, that tells us that this pipe has met the standards for well casing. And then the, where's the other one? The ASTM D2665, that tells us that this is for drain, waste, and vent piping. So if you're like me at all, I read that and I say, okay, well this is safe for irrigation and water distribution well irrigation is used in food crops it's you know water distribution you look go to any livestock uh feed, feed yard or anything like that go to any farm and you're going to see pvc all over the place running water to all the different pens and everything uh you're going to see pv see pipes in um, farms where they're growing pr produce that's running water out to those to the fields what about this one here that say NSF PWG or NSF DWV? What are those? Well, the NSF stands for National Sanitation Foundation. And the National Sanitation Foundation is another standards creating organization that does testing and they have some very rigorous requirements that they have put forth for, for drink, drinking water. And the NSF PWG one that tells us that this pipe has met their requirements for what's called NSF 61. Now, NF 61 is the standard for potable drinking water. And it, it, stip, it stipulates, it has such very strict regulations in it, that stipulates that this, this pipe cannot leach out any chemicals that are dangerous into the drinking water, right? So if this pipe can be used for drinking water, for irrigation, uh, in, in to grow our crops and for water distribution in uh, buildings and in, you know, for our feedlots and stuff, it's probably safe to use in our fish pond, okay? So, and then if you look at the plumbing codes, in the plumbing code specifically, it tells you what kind of piping you can use 
for these types of applications. So I'll go ahead and put it up on the screen right now. You're gonna see a table here that shows you the plumbing code, okay, for water distribution, and it tells you this is the type of pipe that can be used, and it has to meet this standard. And if you look under PVC, you'll see I highlighted it here. It shows you it has to meet the ASTM D1785. And it does, our pipe does. It also says that it must meet the NSF 61 standard. So our pipes meet those. So that tells me our pipes should be pretty good. But what about all the other plastics? Okay, what about these buckets? Right, are these safe? The pool liner, the pumps, all that stuff, the, the pool noodles? Well, what about those? Well, it just so happens that the FDA uh, is the organization who would tell you if something would, is, meets the standard of what they would call food grade. All right, and that would be any plastics that are used to, uh, in food packaging, uh, food manufacturing, food production, distribution, anything like that, right? Uh, food delivery, it's gotta meet those if it's gonna become in contact with food. And so they have, to, they have outlined several different plastics which they say are food grade and don't have the risk of leaching out chemicals or turning into microplastics into your food. All right, and how do you identify those? Well, there's different types of plastics. I'll put a list up on the screen right here. Right, and any one of those plastics should be pretty much safe to use, okay? Um, of course, everything comes with risk, guys. Everything comes with risk, but in plastic is, in, unfortunately, in modern society, it's just unavoidable. It's in our life constantly, and there's no way you can go to eat anywhere that plastics have not been used, right? You go to any restaurant, go to any grocery store, any food you ever are gonna buy, plastics will have been involved. So, but they, they make it pretty easy. Let me show you here. So here we're looking at the, this bucket. On the bottom of this bucket, you're gonna see right here where it says HDPE has this triangle and this number inside of here, okay? So HDPE, that's a uh, high density propylene, polypropylene, whatever that, I can't remember what, exactly what that stands for, but that is one of the plastics that they have deemed as food safe. The number two, if, it's, if it didn't say HDPE on here, the number two right there would tell you that this is number two. So they have a number coding system that goes like from one to six. Uh, well, it goes up higher than that, but one through six are generally considered food safe products. So if you're looking at, a, at a, a product and it's got one of these triangles on here, usually those are arrows. It's the recycling symbol um, with a number in there, but not always. Sometimes it's just a, just a triangle like that. And the inside of there, there'll be a number. And that number is telling you which uh, type of plastic this is. That's how you can know if what you're looking at is food safe. Otherwise, if it doesn't have the number on there, like my pool liner, I'm sure you're not gonna find a number on there, but I can look up on the manufacturer's website and see what type of material it is. This pool liner is made from um, uh, PVC, okay? And so we've already determined that PVC is uh, perfectly fine to use, okay? What about these pool noodles? Well, the pool noodles are made of polyethylene foam. Polyethylene foams are used in a lot of food packaging. It is considered a food safe product, okay? So if you're questioning anything, do your research. That's what we got Google for, man. I mean, we can find everything today. That's, that's what's so amazing. But what you just have to have it in your mind that these are some things I need to make sure of and take, do your due diligence to make sure that you're being safe with what you're using. So does that mean everything is all rainbows and we don't have to worry about anything at all? Not at all. Um, we, there still can be a problem with PVC. And look at this. So you see this pipe right here. It's exposed to UV, to the sun. All right, And it should not be. Uh, at least for an extended period of time. Um, the, the heat and the UV rays will actually cause, can cause le leach, leaching <laughs> um, from the material here uh, over some period of time. And so it, it's important to get this stuff painted and that's gonna be one of my upcoming projects here is to get that stuff painted. Uh, I didn't do so because I wanted to make sure everything was working properly and in order before I did go ahead and paint it because uh, just in case I needed to move things around. Um, but you wouldn't want to leave, leave this out here for many years uh, exposed like that. So we need to get it covered. Uh, so we're going to cover it with paint uh, that will protect it against the UV. So I know for some folks that's still not going to be good enough and they're not going, to want to, not going to want to use plastic. It's perfectly fine. Everybody should make their own decisions on this stuff. It is important. Um, but I feel like I've done my research enough to satisfy me. And I would encourage every one of you to go out and do your own research as well. And always try to keep that in mind as you're choosing to put something into your uh, fish pond system to take that into consideration and make sure that what you're using is 
food safe and it's proven to be safe to, to not leach chemicals or turn into microplastics inside your inside your pond. All right, and I welcome any discussion down below in the comments about this. Um, uh, I'll try to answer any questions, but I'm, I'm no scientist. I, just, I have Google like the rest of us, and I can find some information out, but uh, I'm no expert. So, anyways, thanks for watching. Have a great day. If you like the video, uh, please hit that like button. And if you want to see more from me, hit the subscribe button. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.